a question that I can ask uh, very confidently across the board. How do we create the value uh, for the patient? Because I think that's what we want, right? Yeah. yeah. Do we go this way? Ladies first. Okay. <laughs> So Karibuni, everybody, I also double up as your host. Thank you so much for turning up uh, to our in and responding to our invitation. <coughs> now, uh, today is a very happy day for me because Green Cross has been around for a long time as a mark of accreditation. But we're trying to give more meaning to it so that even when a Mwananchi sees it, they know exactly what it means. Um, and you've asked about the patient and, you know, how do we make um, the patient more secure, um, and how do we focus on the patient? Uh, one of the things that um, that has been evident in the retail sector, which Victor you, you're very familiar with, in the retail pharmacy sector, that has been a huge source of concern for us as PSK and for me personally, um, is a is a lack of data. It's a data desert. So the you know, there is good data, I would say, up to the distributor level, up to the level where we import the medicines. Um, the people in the room, I can see AstraZeneca, I can see Johnson & Johnson. If you ask them for records of exactly what they imported, from where, what batch numbers, what quantities, and who they sold to, you will get that information. At the retail level, I keep saying this, so if you've had it before, Dr. Chip, you've had it many times, you go to the pharmacy, you can easily say, Nipatia Valium, you know, give me Valium. You get your, you say three tablets or whatever, you walk away with your Valium, no record, no receipt, no point of sale, no nothing. Um, I think this presents a risk for the patient, a huge risk because we're not able to, we're not able to go back to the system to see exactly what this patient got. And therefore, all the claims we make about the retail sector, when we say we suspect that there are some people who are sneaking in some products that are not good quality, or we don't know how they came, it's conjecture. Because really, there's no proof, there's no evidence, there's no record keeping. There are pharmacists, and I see them here, um, and I must say Green Cross pharmacists as well, um, who are practicing well, because through from our training and from our ethics and the oath that we take, uh, we need to safeguard the patient. And one of the ways of safeguarding is to capture data. So when you come to my pharmacy, I need to have a record of you as Victor Matata, and this is what I gave you, and this is a batch number on this date and this quantity. And so um, just by plugging that data gap um, by a, you know this EHMIS, we are really making the patient safer. In our midst, as you heard, we have somebody who survived one of the most severe uh, drug reactions, Stephen Johnson syndrome. But he got treated because the, he, he, he was able to go to a facility where they can tell the, the reason for his illness is, is the drug. The name of the drug was known, and even the, you know, where he bought it from. And so we're in an era where uh, our constitution is rights-based. Our health act is rights-based. Uh, Kenyans don't yet know, but I would like them to know that they have the right to the highest attainable standards of health. And they need to demand it. They're the only drivers. They're the only ones who can make change. Us make a change and the government and the policy makers make a change because they're big and their voice is powerful. And so we are hoping to uh, looking for partners to create awareness about Green Cross and also create awareness to patients about medicines are not just medicines, they're also poisons. They can harm you and these are some few things you can do to make sure you're being served at a, at, at, at a pharmacy that um, is compliant to standards and is keeping records. And more so is collaborating with the prescribers. And so there's a secure loop you know, for, of the patient information which makes the patient even safer. Because if there's any queries back to the prescriber, it's very easy. It's very easy for me to tell Dr. Kitulu, this is what the patient took. I know she will confirm that when the patient leaves her practice, you know the patient is going to a deep blue sea, or, a, or you know, a white desert, you never know. Um, and so this is an attempt to have collaborative practice between pharmacists and, and prescribers 
capture data that keeps the patient safe, capture data that's a source of, um, of, of data for research. We can use it for quantification, analysis, we can um, forecast our needs, we can get epidemiological trends, we can tell our Kenyans using too many anti-malarials if we have this prevalence of malaria. And but then the doses of anti-malarials, you know, what, what, you know what, what's the problem? We can easily catch problems when we have data. But when we don't have data, patients are at risk. And that is why I'm very, 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 very um, happy that we're launching this today. So maybe, um, yes, yes, please. So maybe the same question, I think, um, uh, for you, Dr. Jacqueline, to do. What did you say? Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, thank you very much, PSK. Uh, congratulations on the launch of Green Cross, and indeed, we're looking forward to partnering on that. Um, the question, the way you've asked it, I think I'm going to put it in this context of where my colleague right here is sitting, the hot seat. <laughs> I think from last year, I meet so many people who say, oh, I know you, I know you, and I'm like, uh, and I'm looking at them a bit blank, and they know me from TV, or from the newspaper, or from something like that. And it's all about whether the doctors strike, or the professional fees, and, and all those things. And I like to listen to feedback from, from all those. And, Yes, a lot of very good feedback, but I, there's one consistent thing that has come up, and I, that's why I was very happy when Louis invited me. He said, focus on the patient. So we have the healthcare system as it is. I'll go back to, I'll go back to what the, the issue is after I say this. So we have the health, healthcare system and the building blocks of it. We know what it is, the healthcare financing, the medical products, the, um, the, the information systems, all those things make it up. And then I'll go, narrow into the human resources for health. That's who we represent as we sit here. Now, those human resources for health, they are there for what? To serve the public. So here, who here has been a patient in the last two months? Just put up your hand. Okay, whose partner, husband, wife has been a patient? Go, keep your hands up, don't put them down. Whose child has been unwell in the last one? Whose parents have been unwell? Whose neighbor has been unwell? <laughs> you, so who, who, is, who is the public? Yes. Uh, good. So what is that, that public? Who as human resources for health huh, we exist for? What are they? What have they been telling me every time they meet me? I said, okay, yes, we understand those things you're talking about. Yes, the system, actually, we are very sorry for you. We understand. Yes, you need to, to make sure government does their role. So after they finish all that part, guess what they tell me? But what about me as the patient? As the patient, who thinks about me in that relationship? So I was given this topic and I decided I'm going to now break it down to the patient. So me as the care provider that doctor-patient relationship. That is the crux of the matter. You know, when people complain, we, I think in terms of training and, and skills, I don't think we have a problem. In, I think in the East African region, we are tops. Huh? So that's not the problem. And even when the patient comes, you see, that's not the area they are going to complain about. Remember, we're in a very complex uh, profession. So what you do, or if you do it, what, I mean, if you make fine stitches inside there or there, uh, who knows? <laughs> no one knows. At the end of the day, the patient wants to get well. So that information asymmetry makes the patient not entirely able to communicate what their challenge is about what you do technically. Of course, if there are negative, negative results, you will, everybody will know that. But that's not where the problem is. That's a small problem. The bigger problem is the customer service. It is how you relate with that patient. That is actually where all the, you, now you're seeing in the press a lot of litigation going on. It is all about the customer relationship. Now, how many seconds? 10 seconds. 30. 
30, 40, how many? 40, a minute, no, 18 seconds. 18 seconds before a doctor interrupts. And then how, how long before a patient usually would be able to tell you most of the things? It's actually about a minute, except if you had my patients yesterday, they were all geriatrics. So those are, that's, those, are, those are clients. Those ones take a long time to explain very many things. So, the, uh, but generally, in a minute, you'll, you'll get a hint of what it is and they'll elaborate. But we tend to interrupt. And when you do that, you come to the wrong conclusion, and then you interrupt their train of thought, then you don't get the right issues. So, and then you make them feel, you know, like you're not listening to them. So the next step after the reflective listen, the listening, we are talking about the information gathering. When we are information gathering, let's go back. Who is, who is the expert on themselves? You or the patient? the patient? It is the patient. So let's focus again. The expert on the problem is the patient. So that's why you must listen to them very clear, clearly, knowing that they are the experts of themselves. You, you are the expert of disease, huh? of many diseases, but not of that particular patient. So we must listen and gather that information. Once we get that information, then we, you gather, you put it together, then you must negotiate the way forward. Eh? <laughs> it's not about, I, I will dictate this is the way it is going to go. There is the point of, let's agree on what is our next agenda. So once in that agenda, it's how you relate to that patient is the next step, which is the relationship part. So relationship is an acronym. Huh? So for those who are writing, I was in a, a, a representation last week with <laughs> Professor Kokoro, he's such a teacher. He said, students, you're not writing? He said, remove your pens. No, I'm not telling you to do that. But relationship is an acronym. And the R stands for respect, the E for empathy, the L for legitimization, A for apology, T for trust, I for integrity, O for openness, N for naming, and S for support. And I'll quickly run through them. Sorry, Victor. I, I, I'll, I'm, I'm, very quick. I'm very quick. I'll, 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 I'll wind up. So in terms of the next point that patients complain about, you know when they ask, you know what they have been telling me? Doctors have no emotion. Who has had that? Not just doctors. Healthcare workers have no emotion. They, they're just cold. And I always try to explain where that comes from. You know, that from our training, there's that bit of trying to separate your emotion so that you can be able to deal with the issue, which is true because you can't now be all of you so being there together yeah. because then I know who's going to help the other. But you see, we are almost totally divorced, those two things, and the patient feels like they're just dealing with a cold wall. Yes, the, the, the cold wall is going to give me a solution, but doesn't understand where I'm coming from. So that, in, so that relationship-centered care is based on, on connecting with the emotion. And all the, by the way, this sounds like very many things, but you know these are things you can do in minutes. Huh? <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to take 10 minutes to do this. It's, it's a system which you can just work through your mind. And in terms of the respect, that is the part of, of, of respecting whatever the patient tells you. Remember that they are the boss of their, their problems and you're only the expert on the disease. So when they are coming with that challenge, we need to respect wherever they are coming from. If they are coming, they are severely hypertensive, their pressure is 220, they have not taken their medication for the last uh, one week and you want, you want to, to explode, no, 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 understand where they are coming from. Just respect and understand what it is they are saying about it. Empathy. I, I mean, you know, there are bits that are very difficult and we don't we, we don't sound them so that is why they say we are emotionless when somebody for dr nyongesa there how many cancer patients are you seeing and they are struggling and and miserable but if you don't even just empathize and say you know that that sounds very difficult that that's a long time just those words you know which don't cost you much eh? then the person knows you are on along with them and then legitimize legitimization of um you know, one of the patients I saw yesterday, she came in and she's just newly diagnosed with hyperthyroid. And she was so upset and crying and tearful. And, okay, so I, I let her cry. I even gave a box of tissues so that she could cry. I said, but why me? Why does it have to be me? I, I, I mean, do I have to be on medicine forever and, and all that? I said, no, I totally understand. You've been well. And then suddenly now you're not well and there's so many things and you've been told this medication, this test, this whatever. Just legitimization of what it is. 
apology is, 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 is another thing which, is very, which we, we, do, we take for granted. We are running late, the queue is endless. But just telling the patient, imagine today is such a hectic day. You can see all those people. It's just a small thing like that. Those are the things that change the relationship that doc, the patients will appreciate that we are also people like them. If the queue is long and you're waiting, if, imagine me on this other side, I'm seeing all those same people. There's trust in terms of um, sharing a common goal, like this is the journey we are going to take together. Um, in terms of integrity, in the patient has to, to trust in us to be able to do, to do what we are going to do. And part of what Green Cross are saying that that if the medications they are going to get, that we can prove that this is where they came from, we can trace back if there's a problem. Those are things that need to come out. Of course, there's openness. Tell me more about what the issues are. And of course, then naming what, issue, what, the, what the situation is. Sometimes we beat around the bush and we confuse patients. Huh? We are not naming what it is. I will let Dr. and Niambi and Sukari and asking them about history of diabetes. No, I don't have diabetes. Like Niambi or Sukari, Kojuki, Dogo. Let's name things what and name them what they are so that patients can say yes. I've got when they go to the pharmacy and the pharmacist is asking, so are you, you know, any other illness? Let them be able to say it is diabetes rather than the Niambi or Sukari, Kwaju and not connecting it to what it is. And then, of course, the support that we are going to work with them. Those are very, they seem very basic things, but those are the things that will take us to the next level with our patients. The direction we are going, the way the patients are today, we are going to be sued from here to Timbuktu. And it's just because of how we treat the patient as a customer. I know there's people who are always saying that, no, the patient is a patient, they are not a customer. They are a customer. You, as long as you, you, you're in a service industry, the person on the other side is a customer. Different types, but that relationship, what brings you back to, to this hotel as, as PSK, that they gave you good service? What brings you back to the, to the institution, the healthcare institution, that you go to good service? So I wanted to break it down to that patient, doctor-patient relationship, nurse-patient relationship, pharmacy relation, uh, relationship, because that is where everything begins to fall apart. In terms of dealing with the system, uh, we are going to continue the wars. But on that point, I think that uh, 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 focusing on the patient on one-on-one, -on -one, no one can fix that for us. It is ourselves who have to engage with it. Well, I think before we move to Alfred, um, after Alfred we'll be having um, an opportunity to either ask a question or just contribute to this um, uh, topic. So please get your questions ready, get your comments ready. And um, <laughs> I know if there's, uh, if there's somebody who is having a day, it's you. Yeah, so take us through this, through, through this um, topic. Uh, about focusing on the patient, yeah. Just tell us from from your where, where you're sitting. Um, how does it look like? Uh, thank you so much. Good afternoon. <laughs> 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 uh, it's, actually, it's been a very long day. It's a long day for me. Uh, I really want to thank PSK for coming with this initiative. Initiative. I think probably this is the best Valentine gift you can give to a patient. Yeah. Um, Actually, I was, also, I was also tempted to say pass when the mic <laughs> reached me because I'm sure my co the colleagues before me have really spoken into details about uh, value. But I'll just uh, add something small on what they've spoken about. Um, actually, who is a patient? I've just Googled. <laughs> I'm just going to Dr. Google. And he said, it's a person who is registered to receive medical treatment. So it means that that guy who goes to a witch doctor is not a, <laughs> a patient. <laughs> because they're not registered. <laughs> and there are no records. They just shake those color bushes and they tell you, <laughs> this is what you're ailing from and this is your medicine. Um, today, we are handling the patient, a patient, patients that are very, very informed. Very, very informed. Before they come to you, they have gone to who? Google. Dr. Google. So up, up again. 
I want to look at that patient at the clinical environment. The patient probably is maimed. If you look at that patient, there's a chain of actors around that patient. And if you want to add value to this patient, all the actors must put the patient as their first priority. If one of the actors does something, maybe even not immensely, but just slightly, slight mistake, the whole chain is interrupted. Dr. Kitulu will prescribe, Daniela will dispense, I will administer. Are you seeing the chain? Mm. If Dr. Nyongesa makes the wrong diagnosis, Daniela will dispense the wrong drug, I will administer the wrong drug. So I really want to insist on teamwork within the actors that are surrounding this, this patient. I want to give a very uh, uh, candid example within our hospital setups. We usually have these meetings on Mondays, I think in all hospitals nowadays. They are called mortality what? Mortality meetings. Let us come out of here and insist that in these meetings, let us include all players. You understand where I'm coming from? Because in that sphere of having a mortality, there are many actors. So let's bring all of them together on a table and find out what we have to do better so that we lower the mortality. And everyone has a role to play. So I'll really emphasize on the issue of teamwork and all the, the actors as acting as a team and most importantly appreciating the role of everyone with that team. Why am I saying this? I saw the presentation from my brother, Dr. Terry, on standardization. If you don't have standards, you'll have variations. That's why we have patients being transferred from this hospital to the to another one. With the thinking that when I come out of this hospital to this hospital B, I'll get better standards of, of care. And surprisingly, you'll find that probably the same same team <laughs> in this hospital B that the patient is coming from to hospital B, the same same team that is going to handle the patient at hospital B. But you find that at hospital B, the same same team has a better attitude when they are <laughs> than when they are in hospital A. That comes to the issue that Dr. Machabu didn't want to talk about, and I will not talk about it. <laughs> we need fairness and equity. The employer must play his role or her role. They must, and they have no choice. This is, uh, so far as HR is concerned, they have no choice. They must provide a conducive environment. And conducive environment is an issue that we can talk for the for a whole day. We all know, know the components of having a, a conducive environment. When the environment is conducive, the employee, now we, the health professionals, must focus on productivity. We must work in a way that the institution meets its objectives. And the main objective is then the patient. Ladies and gentlemen, I will not say more. It's a very tough day for me. <laughs> I, 
I've just been pulled out of NTV studios to come here. I'm getting some phone calls here that if I'd gotten them when I was young, I could have. <laughs> I could be shivering, but you pray for us. We believe we'll have an amicable solution soonest so that our Wanainchi can receive treatment the public hospital that they desire. Thank you so much.